Long time no see, everybody. All right, we'll give everybody a, a minute to work themselves or work their way in here. Welcome to Lukey Vision. Ghost. Get it? Dougie Vision, the hat. Never mind. Yikes. Yeah, except inside of Hennessy, I've got uh, Pina Frase. <laughs> or fra phrase. Yeah, it's fries. sparkling water. Nothing. Pina Fries. Pineapple strawberry. How was that one? That's good. Is it as tart as the other ones? Not really, but it tastes good. So. Okay, well, that works. Naturally essenced. <laughs> Not flavored, it's essenced. So, all right, we uh doing some shop work here. We tried something somewhat different on a few of Angel's thumbs. She doesn't like very much bevel around the top side of the hole. But the thumb, as we drill it out, is normally a little too snug, so I have to open it up. So I thought that if I added an extra half cut of oval, that it would probably relieve the need for buzzing more out of the thumb hole and making it easier to kind of retain just the small amount of bevel that she has at the top of the thumb. We thought it was going to work, and then as the, you know, as you use the ball and kind of work the thumb in, Generally, it opens up just a little bit more as it kind of as the inside kind of smooths off, and so it got just a little bit too big, and we ended up with more tape than she wanted in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-slug the three that we tried it on, and just kind of show you how we go about doing that. There's actually a fourth one, but we need a bigger slug. Yeah, and this will probably I'll probably be on here for long enough anyway. So. Yeah, my timeless also needs fixed but we need another bit and we need some more slugs. So that's not gonna happen tonight. Yep. So we'll go ahead and start with the proton. Getting chocolate wasted, heck yeah. <laughs> what spare ball do you use? Spare ball. <laughs> Wah -ha -ha. She's got a... Uh, Got one of the blue team storms. She mm -hmm. got one of the blue kind of polyester or clear yep. clear coat, clear cover um, team storm balls, and I use an IQ Tour solid. So basically, what we have to do to start with the reslugging thing, you don't necessarily need to do this, but it's it's easier just to get you started. You straw line. So to help get the bit centered as easily as possible. I got a fancy tripod that I'm putting it on, so it'll just wobble while I move it. Reslugging is generally not that difficult. Now a lot of people make it more difficult than it needs to be. Don't need to get fancy, just get yeah, the job a done. Little bit of, a little bit of patience and just, you don't even really need patience, you just need to care about what you're doing. So we're going ahead and take the inch and a quarter bit, because we use that to install the slug with. So I'm just gonna move this back and forth and make sure that we're kind of generally lined up. And what makes it really easy with her slugs is she's got zero pitch any direction. So it's going to make it pretty easy to line it back up. How many times do you think you can re-slug a ball before you have to go back up? Uh, it depends on how well you re-slug it. Because if you don't get... Some of the problem is that when you drill the slug back out, sometimes you don't get all of the slug back out. And so if you have to scrape the slug residue off or if you cut a little bit into the ball and leave some of the slug still in there, well, then you have to get the rest of the slug out. Well, then the hole's bigger than it was to begin with. So 
if you do a good enough job re-slugging in the first place. So this is when perfection is extremely important. Yeah, well, and then the other thing is that um, if you don't do the greatest job, you can always re-slug with a larger slug. So if you re-slug an inch and a quarter in a while for a couple times and then the slug starts going, you know, you know, if the slug is too loose in the hole when you go to install it, you can just go to a bigger slug size. They've got several different slug sizes and actually she doesn't even need, she doesn't need inch and a quarter. We could do, inch, both of us could actually do inch and an eighth slugs. And it would be a whole lot easier to go that way, but inch and a quarter slugs are just kind of the norm. They're kind of the standard, so. So it looks like this is, Piggy made a friend. This is lined up pretty good. So I'm going to get it started here. slugging is um, normally when you're drilling the hole you want to go slower to kind of preserve the integrity of the hole you don't want to get ridges in it uh, sometimes if the, the shavings get bound up in the hole it can kind of divert the bit a little bit but when we're re-slugging something normally because I, I you know I've stopped when I've gotten to here so the um, the only difficulty when you're doing this sometimes is making sure that you get the pitches right, which we have known pitches to begin with. It's kind of tough sometimes when somebody brings an outside ball into the shop to have every slug that wasn't drilled there because the slug hole may or may not be at the same pitch as the thumb hole. And so all you can do is put the, the pitch gauge in there and measure what pitch the thumb is at. Sometimes if it's, you know, if it's not the same pitch as if the slug hole is not the same pitch as the thumb hole, you don't find that out until you're in the middle of doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, since we've, you know, since this is a known constant, since I know exactly what, what it was set at, we've got the pitches right, um, but the thing that we want to do when we're drilling the slug out is to move faster. What this does is if the, if the bit is you know, because this is a very, very small tolerance, it's very, very difficult to get it perfectly back in the, exactly the same spot so that you're not, you know, a, a little bit to one way or the other. However, to make this work out easier, generally I drill out the slug faster because the slug material is softer than the ball is. So the slug, by going, or by going faster, it will act, the, the walls of the ball will actually divert the slug ever so slightly into the softer area of the slug. So if it's even just the slightest bit one way or the other, going faster will kind of push the bit into the, the softer material of the slug.
Joe asked, is there any issue with being close enough? You still end up with a slug sized hole that you could just stick a new slug in, right? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Is there any issue with being close enough? Oh, close, okay. Is there any issue with being close enough? Yeah, in quotes. Um, yes and no, because if you, now if, some people do this and I don't really advise it. Now, if you get close enough, most of the time what you're gonna end up with is a small shaving or a small you know, sleeve of the original slug on one side of the hole. Um, and ball on the other side, and it can make it difficult getting the slug back in. Um, but yes and no, from a practical point of view, you still end up with a slug-sized hole, but the problem with that is that if you don't have the slug glued from top to bottom, what you might end up with is slug shavings sticking to the ball where the glue was at and then being pried out or removed because I mean you've got a bit that's spinning really fast in there and it's going to suck or pull or twist everything out that's not actually glued to the ball so what you can end up with is some glued slug residue left on the ball but it's not like a consistent part of the slug all the way up and down and so if you get down like an inch and then you have a piece of the slug sticking out, that can really make it tough when you go to reinstall the next slug and actually get that in there. You know, if you get the slug halfway down and the bottom edge of it catches on one little piece of slug that's still glued in there, I, you're going to have problems. So, um, it's not absolutely imperative, but it helps out a whole heck of a lot if you just put the extra couple minutes into uh, making sure it's as accurate as possible. Yeah. So we still have a pretty, now obviously I couldn't get it anywhere near that far down with a fresh hole, but it's still pretty snug. So I'm pretty happy with the... Yeah. slug residue or shaving. I can still see where some of the glue was at, but I got all the slug out, so. <laughs> Curtis Lennox says, Luke, can I has bowling ball? <laughs> <laughs> no, she actually likes this one. So. <laughs> I don't get along with many ASIMs and especially solid ASIMs. I'm not sure why. The ASIMs that I do tend to get along with are pearls. Now the reason I'm doing that is, it's probably going to be really hard to see on camera, but I'm kind of shaving down the sides of the slug at what's going to be the bottom. It's going in this way. And so by doing that, it kind of allows the glue to get inside and between the slug and the ball. Mm -hmm. If you don't shave that down and you leave just the edge on here, all that edge is gonna do is just scrape all the glue off the side of the inside, off the inside of the hole when you go to install it. So by kind of rounding off the bottom a little bit, it allows the glue to kind of to kind of get up in between the slug mm -hmm. and the ball and I also the little vent slit uh, once I do round that off it can kind of close the vent slit sometimes and that's just to allow air to, to come back out and this is also something later that once you have the slug installed you want to drill completely through the bottom of the slug because then that creates a vent hole basically for your thumb hole people used to drill for slugs, people used to drill vent holes in there so that they wouldn't have a suction effect when they went to uh, let go of the ball. Sometimes you don't necessarily stick. Sometimes it's you can have a you can have a thumb hole that fits too well, but this helps uh, the air clear the hole 
for the air to get into the you know get into the hole when your thumb's coming out. Yep. Yeah, for the nuclear cell versus Axiom Pearl, that was what his rated series is for. So you can actually go watch the two. But those are two totally different balls. So if you're wanting to carry both, yeah, you're fine. If you're wanting one to replace the other, not happening. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Um, yes, that is an RST back there. Um, yeah. The other one is a Marvel Max SC. It's an overseas ball. I did a great job plugging, by the way. Yeah, it's actually... This one could be kind of interesting because I had to re-slug it, so... Did I plug the... You plugged everything. I did plug the thumb. Oh, yeah, because I plugged the thumb first. Okay, so this is not going to be a problem. So I plugged the thumb first thinking that I was just going to move the thumb up. Yeah, he... So, the, okay. the pin location was close and probably wouldn't have really been much different. But I've had the same layout for 14, 15 years. Whenever I met him, he actually picked that layout and then stuck with it. And so every ball since then, he has drilled, and it's been that layout. So it would have been the only ball in 15 years that didn't have that layout. And I'm not entirely OCD, but that just, no, that wasn't happening. So I made him replug the whole thing. Okay. So this should go in. No squeaky. Pretty simple. Yeah, actually, I don't mind re-slugging stuff because I take the time to do it right the first time. And then generally the slug goes in. It's still snug, but it goes in a whole lot easier. There's not the fear of it kind of locking up halfway down and having to then cut the top off of it and then line it up and drill the thing back out. And it's just a pain. So what we did on her thumb hole before is she's got a 25, 30 seconds bit. And she had uh, an 060 oval at 45 degrees. And so basically what I made it was like an 070 oval. Um, instead of the cuts are going to be 021 and 021, I'm going to do two of those for a total of 042. Well, I just went up to 050 for a third and final cut after the fact. Um, and that didn't really work out. So we're just going to go back to our 042 and 042. Yeah, and questions, to, questions. to keep from putting bridges in there, we're going to do, um, we're going to do it in two cuts. something I like I stick pretty close to it and just let the bowl be the differences um, even I mean most of the pros do this too they find a couple of layouts that they that they like and then they use the balls for the differences they kind of they really only uh, diverge from layouts if they're looking for something uh, uber specific that will come out with a parallax pearl probably i think that they they spent a bit of time on that core so i think that that's gonna they're gonna keep using that core so and generally the the uh line names stay with a certain core so if it's in a certain line they'll all have the same core like all the physics balls are going to have the same core they can have several different covers but they're going to have the same core do you think every core will eventually have an r2s on it Oh, probably. There's only been, I think the Crux Core is one of, the, one of the few that hasn't, but it had e tracks Pearl on it for the, or ERG, I guess, which is, might as well be. Oh, Pearl. Black Widow 2.0 is what CT, CTK oh, Brian had. Yeah. The Widows.
no, this is not a jet press. This is a trioval from Jayhawk out of Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, if they drop that many balls, it's, they're going to drop a bunch. Interested to see if it actually comes on the 900 side. Curtis asks if you think the PBR would be a good short pin ball. My idea is to play the friction line and it won't over hook. I get it to the left too much. I'm trying to play as straight as I can. I think the only issue with that is that it's already got a fairly low differential to begin with. And so when you go short pin, uh, you're basically not going to get any flare at all out of it. So that's going to be the only concern is creating carry down like a urethane ball basically, but if you're okay with that, then I don't really see a problem. Generally speaking, short pin balls are better with uh, uh, the... He said he wants it continuous, but for it to be smoother front to back than most resin plays for him. Yeah, it's just, again, the only the only issue there is going to be the you're not going to get any flare, you're not, not going to get any uh, rate separation. And so you're going to create a lot of carry down. It's going to be smooth and continuous, uh, but you're also not going to get much, you're not going to get much flare. So that would be the only problem. Instead of adding the extra cut, we're going to stop there. This is just this has been her normal thumb for a while. So, and because we had the because the thumb hole was centered in the slug to begin with, and we had to center the bit to get the slug out, then I was able to just pop her thumb bit in and not have to move it around to check anything. And because she's zero zero, all I have to do now is just reset the. I don't have to move the ball at all to cut the slug off. Is it possible to drill a UFO to not hook? Nope. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the answer, but yeah. <laughs> just to hear you say no. Yeah. Uh, Curtis oh. says, I'm okay with that. I play with urethane almost constantly. Oops, there it went. Okay. I just don't want it to be a dud if I do that. I can still trick it with my hand to make it move if I need to. No, no, I think it'll be stronger type of, you know, kind of stronger, more resin urethane, so... If you go like a two and a half, two and a half pin, you're still kind of out of the danger zone and it might flare a little bit. I think James is bulls tonight. It might be where he is at. A couple people are asking where James is. Oh, yeah, James bulls on, well, I think he, he bulls on Sunday, I know. I don't know where he's at tonight. Of course, I don't Well, this was kind of last minute thing. Yeah. Uh, the ball comparison question, it kind of helps to know why, because saying this ball versus this, is it something that you're trying to replace? Is it something that you're trying to carry both in the bag for? Is it just you're trying to understand things? And so sometimes the this versus that, it's just, they don't always get answered correctly because of the why. And which was part of the reason he also did the rated series is to try and help basically teach other people how to see that if there's other little nuanced questions that they need then that's totally understandable there's some of them out there that they buy one ball every 10 years and so he'll get a question of a code red versus parallax he's going what are you doing why but if the last ball they purchased was a code red and they wanted something else, then that's their why. If that makes sense. I may have just rampled like Luke does. Mm -hmm. You're wearing on me. It's only took 12 years. Uh, 
uh, Fruit Loops asks if you've ever thought of trying a short pin for yourself on, say, a UFO or RST with like a one inch pin range. I'm curious as to how that would work for you. Um, no, uh, with because a short pin ASIM kind of goes against the idea of it being short pin. And if you're going to short pin an ASIM, you might as well just go with a stronger pin on a symmetrical ball. Because I think that's kind of where it ends up. The whole point of, of short pinning something is to get a resin look, but smoother. And to have something that also flares. So I don't, I think when most people go to short pin something, it's normally a bigger symmetric ball. Curtis, that wasn't very nice. So, what wasn't very nice? Somebody asked if the ball comparisons got irritating, and so then oh. Curtis pops in here and says, how does the hot cell in the phase three compare with the laugh sign emoji? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why I made the rated series. Number one, it saves, number one, it helps you answer your question more quickly. Yeah, sort of teaching you had a fish instead of giving you a bunch of fish. Yeah, so there's sometimes I can't get back to questions for two or three days, and so... Uh, being able to just kind of go do it yourself um, makes it easier for you, number one, so you, you have a resource without having to wait on me. And number two, yeah, it does suck up a lot of time an answering individual questions, and especially when it's of the variety of how does an Omega Crux compare to a High Road Pearl or some other such nonsense. Well, and my point of it, when I was rambling was sometimes knowing the why, like, is it a, are you trying to compare them because you want to carry them both? Yeah, yeah. Or are you trying to ask because you want to replace them, especially when you get the really old ball comparisons? Yeah. Some, sometimes people ask for comparisons and uh, they mean compliment or they were like, well, how does this ball compare to this ball? And I'm like, I'm like, well, they're totally completely different. Why why are you even asking about these two? And they're like, well, I want to know if they can fit in the same bag together. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's, you know. Yeah, you're trying to figure out how they complement each other as opposed mm -hmm. to actually the differences in them. So if, if any of you watching now or watching back later, if you ask a ball comparison question, stating the why is extremely helpful. Okay, Alan says, so what would it cost for you to part with one of those pro motions? I, too, love that ball motion it gives. Um, I think there's still, you can still find them on bowling.com or Bowler X, or you, if you surf around to a lot of the normal bowling websites, you mm -hmm. might still be able to find them, and they might, they're probably still on closeout. If you send him a promotion tour, you could probably get one. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a lot of stuff that I would, I've got, I've actually got plenty of them now. So there are some things that you could send me to trade. Uh, yeah. Um, but they would have to be. They'd have to be primo. Yeah, they'd have to be good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, I wouldn't take anything. How does anything, the pro shop remove my urethane slug from my old ball? Or that. Have to be an so. Um... The as far as to remove your urethane slug from your old ball and put in an interchangeable, it works just the same. Uh, yeah, it's actually really easy because you gotta you gotta drill the hole bigger. Um, so whether there's a slug in there or it's just a hole in the ball, you have to drill the hole bigger to put in an interchangeable. So it's really really easy to go from slug to interchangeable. It's not so easy, or it is easy. You just have to plug to go from interchangeable back to a slug so all right started on this one yeah curtis says i'm kind of getting smarter about ball motion so i can kind of see it when you throw it definitely more so since you moved to the left you mm. wield everything so much righty it all looked the same yeah, yeah. which was a huge reason why he added me in there well that that was another thing there was a lot of people that were kind of upset about me going left-handed but if you can find videos of 400 rev rates hooking the entire lane on literally any other video you go watch. You can find a big rev righty hooking the entire lane 
on countless other videos, but there's not a whole lot of lefties doing videos out there, and there's not a whole lot of angel type styles doing mm -hmm. videos out there. So it really lets you see the ball motion. I was extremely hesitant when he asked me to do it to begin with, but it's worked out fantastic, and I think it's helped a lot of bowlers, which is even I yeah because they they'd rather watch her than me anyway. So. Chris Strong says, I just want to know which balls are clean in the front, good mid lane read, and strong yeah. back end. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stephen Millen, check eBay too. Good call. Yeah, yeah. eBay is, and actually, that's kind of one of those things people have kind of forgotten about eBay. Um, and somebody was telling me that there's a lot of, like, cheap 900 Global stuff on there too. He's like, you can find some of their older stuff. Uh, that can be more expensive if you go the more traditional route. Like if you go on to a ball trading group on Facebook or you try to order them from, they're either, they're gone from most of the websites. And if you try to go find them from somebody else, they're going to be quite a bit more expensive than they are on eBay. So apparently eBay is a nice little resource to, uh, you're good. I'm just going to add a discord link in here. Okay. All right. We're going to get started on this one. All right, just popped in the Discord and the Patreon links if you all are interested. Discord has a free side on the general if you don't really want to spend the money each month, not a problem. And then if you did want to contribute and get on to the paid side with the other channels, it's only $5 a month. And that's the Patreon side. really good confetti out of this. Curtis asks, if you had a choice, would you punch up an Omega or a P2 right now, and why? Um, I just, I did recently drill an Omega. It, the layout makes it a little bit more condition specific. Uh, plus, it's a little bit slower than I would typically use. I would probably go for a Phase 2, but... They're both good, I just use the phase two more often. So if the majority of what you bowl on is half shots, probably would be a phase two. Uh, but the Omega is definitely one that has its place. I definitely am glad that I drilled one and that I have it. It just goes more to tournaments. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Huh? I kind of want to do the right. orange and match the labels. I think we need to order some more supplies, actually. That ain't good. Don't need dust in your eye. Huh? Don't need dust in your eye. You need gold seat.
Oh yeah, the the nines are fantastic. Luke loves his. Yeah, I actually need to do another video kind of updating because I told everybody I'd, I'd update later, and I've had them for about a year and a half, and they're still in great shape. Of course, a lot of people swear they fall apart in six months, but I don't. I haven't had any problems. Mm. I generally don't have problems though. Like the other nine, the original nines that I got when they came out, never had a problem with them at all. I just wanted the the boas. Yeah. So, all right, that's ready to go. Uh, Curtis, I missed your question. I'm, it, what, the blue and white ball that's on the press right now, it's a Marvel Max SE, if that's what you're asking. Oh. Fred McGee, love your video about the truth, the truth of ball reviews. After I watched it, I put a big post about it on my Facebook page, told everybody to watch it. Cool. Yes. <laughs> you really should wear that more. It actually is pretty awesome. Mm hmm Peckers, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where ball reviews, when they started out, they were less advertising the ball and more trying to show ball motion. And then, kind of as it's gone on, people use it more as a way to say, hey, look what I'm doing, look how I'm showing the ball off, I'm trying to, they became, they didn't become, or they, they stopped being reviews and started becoming commercials. And people were using them more as a way to try to show off to the company and try to get a staff deal and, and whatever else. And so, you know, there's very few, reviews out there anymore I think where people are actually trying to give a, an honest review and more trying to uh, brown nose the company or something. <laughs> D. Tang making the best ball commercials right now. Uh, he actually is. Um, are you going to review overseas balls? Um, yes and no. When I do drill them, I make reviews for them, but they're only for my Patreon group to watch, partially because they pay me every month, and also partially because the company doesn't really want me advertising stuff that people can't just walk into a pro shop and buy, which is completely fair because if I... You're gonna make me nervous, just put no, it on. Well, no, it, the, it, the glue's not gonna do anything until there's contact, so. I, you, can you please? I've done this for a while. I know. That's why I said you're making me nervous. Well, this. Just... Sit there for a second. Um, but if if people watch a ball review, like I had, I already had somebody when I showed off Angels Trend SE. They weren't. They didn't um, understand the concept of the the overseas thing, and so he said, "Well, hey, I I watched your." live stream earlier today and I saw the Trend SE that you got and I tried to go and find it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I said, well, it's overseas slash international, um, which means you're going to have to go to a selling trading group or whatever else to find one and it's going to be $300 minimum. So um, a lot of people don't know that there is such a thing as international balls and so if I make a video for something and they see it, and they like it, and they go to try to find it, and they can't go into a pro shop and get it, and they can't just pop online and grab one, it's probably going to upset them or piss them off or or whatever else. So, you know, they would prefer that I just make review videos for the stateside stuff that people can just walk into a pro shop and get, which is completely fair. So, so generally I reserve the overseas reviews for, I did a couple of them when I first started getting them, but then there was the, you know, hey, we'd really rather you just review the stateside stuff. And, and they, they had a fair reason, so, so I complied. And uh, 
Uh, but in the in the Patreon Discord group, people people know the story. They know that they're going to be paying for it. And so if I drill something, I do go ahead and make a review. It just you know it's just private for the for the Discord and Patreon group. So I did a review for my Phase Zero that's on there. Um, my Zero Gravity that I drilled. That's an older one. Curtis. Uh, he says you should do those on Patreon. And you do. I'm dumb. <laughs> yeah. Wah, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, you have to scroll back in that stupid Patreon feed. That's why, the, once again, that's why I stopped posting stuff on Patreon because I tended to just... I thought posting a bunch was helping, but it's actually just burying a lot of the good stuff because it's just like a Facebook feed. So I stopped posting so much on Patreon <laughs> so that... The, just the individual stuff that I, the, the, the actual good stuff that I want to put up instead of all the, all the extra stuff goes into Discord because that's where we spend most of the time anyway. Yeah. And as far as the Global 900, we are operating under the 2020 contract and that's, there's no 900 for us. Yeah, the uh, um, Storm hasn't made any kind of public announcement. So... <sighs> We're uh, doing the Storm Road thing. And as far as the two-month report card, he has a lot of homework to do. Yeah, I do have several of those to make. So. Um, I think I did. I think I'm caught up from, well, no, I didn't. Have I done it for the Parallax and IQ Tornado Pearl? And, I don't think so. So, yeah, I think I've got through August kind of to catch up from. So, I need to do um the three that came were actually the mvp attitude well no i think i actually did those i think i did those mm -hmm. um, i've lost check. track but i know i need to do the axiom pearl and the fast pitch and the rubicon now yeah. so i do have a few report cards to get to what has been your favorite ball of this year and of all time uh, this year was the IQ Tornado Pearl. If you want to go back and watch the, uh, we did a, a recap. James and I kind of did a 2020 recap while we were doing the Positive Tales fundraiser. So if you go back to that, James and I talked about our favorite balls of the year. We talked about every single ball that came out this year. Uh, we had several different categories that we ranked them in. We talked about the stuff that got discontinued. So if you want to see kind of a big overview of that. Go it was two our... and a half hours and it covered every single ball and both of their points of view and why. Yeah. So if you want to go back and check that out. Um, but my, my ball of the year was the IQ Tornado Pearl. And then my favorite one of all time, I think I was talking about this earlier this morning, probably has to be the ProMotion now because it was the... Um, it was the Hammer Taboo was number one, and then number two was the Motive Covert Revolt. Um, but I've had several promotions. I only had one Taboo, and I had one Covert Revolt. And, you know, aside from using the crap out of both of them, those both being amazing, I now own seven promotions. So I think that kind of says it all. All right. Back to the rack, back to the rack, come on. Blake says, spot on Luke, I switched to Storm Roto because of your attention to detail in your reviews. Throwing consistent strike with music in the background does no good to anyone. Keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. As far as favorite overseas balls, he really doesn't have very many to choose from. What would you think is favorite so far? Uh, my favorite overseas ball? Yeah. Caleb Byrne. Easy. I'm just saying you just haven't had very many yet. Uh, the Iron Team. Oh, yeah. It's basically a Iron Pearl retailer. So I would have to say those are my favorite ones. Those have been the best for me anyway. Uh, phase Zero has, has been pretty good so far. I haven't drilled a whole lot of them lately. Do you want to make any predictions on the Rubicon UC2 of what you expect? Um, sure, why not? On paper, it's kind of astrophysics like. But from watching the uh, storm has a 
sideways video out on it, and watching that, it kind of looks like a stronger idle synergy. It definitely, it definitely moves down lane. You can tell it's a Rubicon, but it just kind of looks like a slightly asymmetric idle synergy. Caribbean popped in and says the last report cards you did were the hustles and the electrifies. Okay. Yeah, I guess I do need to do the parallax and the tornado pearl and MVP attitude and trend. You are correct, Curtis. Chad could hook a square ball off the gutter. Uh, Curtis said Chad could hook a square ball off the gutter. McLean. Yeah. Mr. McLean. just drilling a bigger hole and um, then just adding the bevel um, so I tried to make the hole I tried to drill the hole slightly bigger and it just didn't really work out so we're going back to her old thumb hole and just gonna kind of uh, work them out the way that we had been doing before so yeah just more or less showing the process of re-slugging a ball um, it's definitely a lot more difficult than uh, drilling a ball to begin with, uh, but it just takes a little bit of extra effort and attention to detail. Yeah. Uh, Snike, as far as becoming a staffer, he's talked about it in some different ones. I think he actually has his own video on just that, but it's basically being a staffer without a contract. As far as being present, you represent the brand, you're out there, people know who you are, and it's they have to see value in you and if you can't show them that they're not going to offer you a piece of paper to sign yeah um big big notes on that are to get to know your your area rep uh if you send a if you send a staff uh if you send a resume or a staff application to hq it's probably not going to go anywhere because they figure that if you don't know who your regional rep is and the regional rep doesn't know you then uh, probably a long shot on that you know then they then you probably don't bowl a whole lot of stuff or you're probably not in a pro shop or you're not in a position to know the rep in the first place and so that's um, that's going to be a big strike if the rep doesn't even know who you are so that's the first place to start you got to be out bowling tournaments and they just want they're not staffers so much as brand representatives they just want people that are kind of out there that know the product that um you don't kick ball returns you're not out there yeah causing they, drama you're not the one that's on oh god that guy shows up and it's not because you win tournaments it's because they don't want to bowl with you mm -hmm. you got to be the bowler's bowler, I guess, like the man's man sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite scent? Oh. I know mine. Mine is probably the strawberry from the X Factor Triple Extreme. That's the only time that they've ever used strawberry. See, and I didn't get to smell that one, so I guess I can't weigh in on that. But oh, the man. ones I've smelled, Caribbean Cooler. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, basically sweet tarts. It smells like sweet tarts. 
I would like that. Yeah. That one I could do. Well, the Caribbean cooler is basically sweet tarts. Yeah. So. Oh, I thought that was the strawberries you were talking uh, about. Okay. No. no, the strawberries was like a strawberries and cream type candle. Oh, it is not daylight where we are. It is nine o'clock here. Huh? The IQ Tour Solid is the best smell. My IQ Tour Solid that I just got actually smells like the Parallax. Yeah. Um, Reslugging, if you, like how he's doing it, he's taking the slug out and putting it right back. It does nothing to the ball. Um, now, if you plug a ball and put something right back, it. it I really wouldn't think it would change anything. No. <laughs> nice. Good job, Shard the Rack. Um, neither one of us used switch grip. Luke used to, but he had one fail on him, and it was the ball he wanted, needed to use at that time. At Nationals? Yeah, at Nationals, of all things. And now that he doesn't screw with his thumb anymore, he's it's he has zero anything. It's uh, put one hole in and be done. I did it at the time because it was cool. Well, and you guys were also making your own slugs. You weren't using the turbos, because no, that's why I, you made me switch, too. Um, well, yeah, the turbo slugs. The turbo system we could do that with, but the, the vice system, you have to use vice slugs, or you have to... No, uh, your shop was making this, the no, actual slugs. But no, I'm saying that you can't make vice slugs. Oh, okay. Vice, if you use the vice system, it has to be their slugs, or you have to kind of go out of your way, I think. Mr. Bill makes his own vice slugs, but it's quite a bit trickier process. Uh, yes, Parallax's is funnel it. cake smell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, the promotion smells like Irish Spring Old Spice, and it's oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, Greg, Greg at Waters and Neary said, Cassie said the high road is the best smelling. Uh, the high road's pretty outstanding. Kind of that, that mixed berry or whatever, the high road's pretty good. Yeah, I would agree. There's one we have in the basement, and I'm tempted to steal it. Yes, yeah, I don't think I'm going to drill it. I don't think you've never had an original high road, have you? Nope, haven't had that one either. We might have to do a classics stream for Angel because she's never had an IQ Tour Solid and she's never had a high road. What are we doing here? Um, Ernesto, there's no change in the pitch or span or anything. It's just plain reslugging. Yeah, we're just, the we tried a different hole size. I went a little bit bigger on the drill and that didn't really work out. So we're just redrilling, uh, just kind of reinstalling a smaller here. My side to side cut my thumb, it was rubbing on my thumbs just on the side. He thought, well, I'll just add an extra cut. Well, it changed it just enough front to back that I went from having one piece of tape to seven pieces of tape and it still wasn't enough. Well, I didn't even add an extra cut. I added an extra half cut. Yeah, that's not even sorry. a full half. Yeah, it, so. he, he was confused. I didn't understand it. I just knew that I wasn't able to hold on to the ball.
Roto's got some, got the best ASIMs right now. Uh, not too far on. I was just, I'm trying to even think of what um, ASIM I have of Storm even. That, uh, you don't like the, the, the Proton. Yeah, that one doesn't really go too much, though. Yeah, well, it's just it's a little too strong. Yeah, that's true. Um, now that the astrophysics has been discontinued, I like the parallax a lot, so. Um, I didn't dislike it. I just hate the smell too much. The Omega, I think, is a little bit more specific use. I say the RST, everybody's loving that Yeah, everybody's one. loving the RST, and the, the nuclear cell's pretty popular, too, and... Um, and the Rubicon's right behind it. Yeah, the Rubicon's. And now with the the UC two. Yeah, and the UFO is is pretty amazing. So, all right, this looks like it's pretty good. So. Yeah, it is a little hard for you to meet your staff if they live three states away, but the pro shop probably is where you would start at that point then as far as you get in good with your pro shop person because usually the pro sh the reps will stop by pro shops. Well, even if the rep doesn't know you, if they ask some of their staffers, it's like, hey, you know, some of the staffers in that area, it's like, okay, well, um, who's so and so? Do you bowl with them? Whatever else. So if they can get some intel from their own staffers, so yeah, it's, it's kind of tough for the for the rep to know everybody. Yes. But if they generally they rely a lot on their staffers too. That will say, oh, okay, well I've got staffer so and so in this area. This person and somebody else in this area sent me an application. If they ask the, you know, if they ask their staff from that area it's like oh yeah he's always at bowling tournaments he helps with this shop or he helps with clinics or he helps with this or mm -hmm. whatever else <laughs> Luke actually is associated with In The Zone Pro Shop. They have, uh, what, five shops in the area? Yeah, we have five shops. we got one in Tobago, one in Lawrence, uh, one in Belton, one in North Kansas City, and one in Olathe. Yeah. It's just the Topeka shop. It's the only shop in Topeka. Now, there used to be two shops, but the other bowling center closed the shop, and so now there's only one. And they're... They're pretty busy. Yeah, so he's really busy, and so when we get two balls to drill for each ball luke would go into the shop and dave would be lined up and he had like six balls to drill and luke's in there with his own six balls to drill and it's like well great now i've got to wait you know three hours just to get onto the press plus then he's got to go out and film for all of these balls and so just trying to make the time work for his he works four tens and, and work out of town so the only time that i can and really the only time that i can film is on Fridays, and so I would have to get in to drill the balls on a Thursday afternoon or as early as possible Friday, and so it was very tight timing, and I, you know, I really couldn't make customers wait to get their stuff done because I was in there doing stuff, so this was, 
this is a lot, me having my own press at home is a lot less of a conflict of interest than yeah. it would be to continue. And plus, the, the shop is 20 minutes across town, and so to load everything up and drive over there and drill six bowls in a sitting when the shop was open and whatever else, you know, now I can, I can drill stuff at home, I have, you know, I don't spend a lot of my time driving. Well, and plus with um, four, five out. months, the pro shop, I mean, the bowling centers and the pro shops were closed. We could still take care of stuff here and do things here. So it's 100% for, for convenience. And if people request Luke to drill anything, he will go into the pro shop. He still works for the pro shop. He'll just go in there and he'll take care of them. <laughs> Norm showed up. He said, dig in the new beanie, Luke Lutang. Um, as far as how old do you have to be to work in a pro shop? Uh, yeah. How old do you have to be in the pro shop? Is it 18? Most places, I think it's 18. Yeah, I think it depends on the work law, number one. But uh, I do know that some places here have like an apprenticeship program or something like that. Oh, and by the way, Norm, this is Lukey Vision. Oh, stop it. No, yeah. no, we are not doing that. It is not Lukey Vision. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm overruling you. I'm vetoing you. No, no, it's not. I'm putting you on the couch. Sands, Hennessy. No, stop it. And, huh. Oh, my God. Operator. Child. Right, so yes, please. But if you have a youth or you are a youth and want to get into it, a lot of the shops will actually let you do um, like plug work. So it basically gets you in there. You can talk to them. You can chat at them. Kind of watch what they're doing without operating the heavy machinery if they're not either comfortable with you or laws don't allow it. But mixing plug and whatnot just saves them time and gets you in there. Oh, move from California to Texas. Yup. Yep. I think Texas is a pretty good place to be. Yeah, I've liked it when I've been there to visit. Like I've got an aunt and uncle that's lived in San Antonio for a while. I know that the Ballards live down there. Yeah, depending on your area, you've got access to a lot of stuff down in Texas. Um, Ed, the re-slugging is because I am picky. Yeah, we tried a little <laughs> bit. He just got here, so he was cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, Angel doesn't like a whole lot of bevel on the top of the, the thumb hole. And so, uh, but with her regular thumb size, we needed, we still needed to buzz a little. Once we got drilling, we needed to buzz a little bit more out of it. It was easier to just drill the hole a little bit bigger and that helped maintain the integrity of the, of the bevel. Uh, it's a little bit easier that way to make sure that everything's kind of more even and uniform. Well, I tried just adding a half a cut to her thumb hole size and that didn't really work out. And so we're going back to just her original, her original thumb hole, so. At first when he did it and I stuck my thumb in there and I threw it for a while and I was like, oh yeah, this is great. And then as it wore down or whatever, it, no, no bad. Like, no, we are actually in Kansas. 
Um, but if you are coming through Kansas, In the Zone Pro Shop is the shop that Luke is associated with. Tyler asked that he said he he has not used the trioval. He's always had vacuum jigs. What are the pros and cons of the trioval? Um, there's really not any cons. I haven't uh, the, the vacuum jig. So it's the one with the vacuum on the bottom, I would imagine. Um, I think that the only con is uh, the plate that kind of holds this down. Um, I would, the, I like the look of the vacuum jig a whole lot more. Uh, now the dry oval wants the ball in place. The vacuum jig, I think, is it's not quite as it is not quite as accurate because you have to let go of the, the vacuum seal. There's nothing to block it into a certain orientation. So the dry oval is more accurate, uh, but there's more parts. Obviously, as you can see, uh, every once in a while, the every once in a while the uh, screws do strip out. So, like of the the locking handles down here, the screws will strip out. I'll have to change those eventually. I shouldn't have to change them a whole bunch. Um, but it's the trioval is insanely accurate. It's a whole lot easier to kind of manually adjust things back and forth. So if you don't get the ball exactly where you want it to be, uh, it's easier to make tiny, tiny little adjustments one way or the other with the vacuum thing. If you don't get it right in the right spot, you've got to let go of the vacuum and then you have to kind of adjust it again. Then you have to reset the vacuum with this. You just, um, there's already a little bit of tension there. Even like, even if I can just, you know, there's enough, I can set it to where there's enough tension here that I can let go of the locking clamps and it won't move. So I can kind of fine tune it to get it exactly where I want it and then I can set the locking clamps. Um, so I think the, uh, as far as ease of use, the vacuum jig has it. Uh, but I think as far as um, precision, you can there you can definitely get a lot more accurate now if you're good with a vacuum jig you're going to be good period but i think it's easier to be more accurate or to be pretty well laser accurate with a trioval uh, versus a vacuum jig i actually looked at the vacuum jig when we were going to look at this one but all i've used is a trioval and this is kind of the this is kind of the best of the best. And some of the other stuff I looked at, it's like, well, yeah, it's cheaper and it would probably work just fine. But I'm going to be doing this indefinitely, and this is this is kind of the best. And if I didn't, if I cheaped out and didn't get what I wanted um, down the road when it's when it's all paid off and the money's forgotten about, I'm going to be stuck with something that I don't really like that much. So. Mm -hmm. Curtis dropped a little hint in here. He says he has four to five short videos and a few of them almost have a thousand views just putting that out there oh yeah 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 <laughs> yep. and i am, uh, I am... <laughs> are, are, are y'all android people no no we're iphone people yep we're, we're iSheep. yep um seth will you be doing another video on breaking down the nationals patterns for next year's open championships 
and what equipment you will be taking. That would be the only update. There's really no... They found the scoring case that they like for nationals, and so even though they are going to slightly adjust things here and there, the patterns are largely going to be very similar. I would have a hard time, and if you, especially if you go back and look at everything after the fact, everything is extremely ridiculously similar. Norm says, what goes through your head when you drill a ball? Are you focusing on where, on what the press is doing, or does the mind wander? Um, no, actually, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty laser focused when I'm actually drilling something, because I see it as kind of a challenge to see how accurate I can be. Um, so this is actually quite a bit of fun to pay attention to this. I, my mind doesn't usually wander when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing stuff on the on the drill press. Uh, but back to the nationals thing, breaking breaking down the shot is going to be kind of the same breaking down any shot really is kind of the same idea, but the nationals team pattern specifically is the tougher of the two and requires more teamwork. The doubles and singles pattern is normally uh, uh, preservation of what you have plus with only three people on the pair and I think that they're going to only or three people on the lane I think they're going to only two people on a lane now going forward so if they're a lot harder to break down or it goes a lot slower plus you're bowling six games so you don't really want to break them down a bunch anyway so the team pattern is, is the one that absolutely must be broken down and that's going to be kind of a universal concept. The only thing that will change obviously is as we get new equipment, the equipment that we're going to take and that we're probably going to use is going to change. So yeah, I might update. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure I'll do a video on that. Yeah. Snake, uh, I think that's how you... I put the D Discord and Patreon links in there. So if you want to oh, yeah. um, continue chatting the, there is a free side on the Discord that's basically this chat discussion is what happens in there almost 24-7. We've got even people in from Australia in there. There's a bunch of... Uh, Billy, I went to Nats in 2017, or yeah, 17, 18, and 19, and also the two patterns played about the same for me all three years. Uh, the two patterns should play... On the left side, they're going to play more similar than the right side. On the right side, the team pattern is a whole lot drier than the national, than the, than the doubles and singles pattern. But. Let's see how close I can move. Still get everything in there. There we go. Uh, but they're going to be very, all the patterns are going to be very similar from year to year. You're not going to see a whole lot of variance between how they play. Uh, once you've got the blueprint kind of of how they play, you know, how the team shot plays and how the double and single shot plays, they're going to play pretty well the same uh, every single year because, like I said, they've kind of found the scoring pace that they like. Um, so, and it's been pretty consistent from, from year to year of what it's taken, so they just kind of adjust the lane conditions based on where they're at or you know, what center they're at, because topography and lane surface age and lane surface will, will uh, make them play slightly different, so they adjust the pattern based on how that particular center is going to play. Now, with them being Vegas back-to-back -back years now, basically, since we didn't go to Reno this year, they probably won't have to adjust it much at all. It's just, if anything, it's just a couple more years' worth of age and use on the lanes. Um, they might adjust something, but. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyhow, so that's how you re-slug a bowling ball. We're going ahead and um, I'll finish work on that here, I guess. Yep. But no, the links, um, I went over and stole Luke's YouTube, but the 
He's got a Patreon link and then a Discord link. The Discord is the chat server. If you join it, there is a free side, just the general. And all we do is talk bowling and there's some other stuff that people talk video games. Um, share tournaments in your area. Just tons of stuff. There is a paid side to it if you want to. You don't have to. Um, that's through Patreon. It's just five bucks a month. Fred says, Luke, I really appreciate your knowledge about the insides of bowling. Thank you. Yep. Anytime, I appreciate your watching for the time word. Awesome. Snike said he joined Discord. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and even if, you, even if you just want to hang out in the free channel, it's, it's there, so... Just enough for a piece of tape. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. we got a we got a norm question. Uh, no balls. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Says Angel leaves you home alone when Joe Pesky and Daniel Pesky. Stern. Sorry. Joe Pesci. And there you go. And Daniel Stern break into your house. Which two storm and roto grit balls? do you attach two ropes to throw at their faces as they climb the stairwell? Well, we definitely want a couple of them that hit like trucks. <laughs> but all of them hit like trucks. Oh. So, um, uh, one of them would have to be the parallax because if the bowl doesn't knock them out, the smell definitely will. There you go. Um, Probably a, I don't know, probably a Rubicon so they won't see it coming. It won't be like these bright, flashy colors. To... I was writing on you say like a, a urethane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I moved all the trash cans around on you. Yeah. Nah, I just couldn't decide whether I wanted to throw away in that one or make the long track over here. All right, so... We've uh, got the brand new slugs back in here, and as you can see, it looks like I looks like I just drilled it. Oh, James just showed up. Says, yeah. "Oh, look, another live stream." Yeah. From fake Dougie. <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, I said this. Hey, this is Lukey Vision. No, this is not. Yeah. No, I'm gonna mute you. Yeah. Can I mute your own server? I'm not sure I can do this. Yeah, Sam's Hennessy, and a whole no. lot brighter. No. Yes, James, we're sh I'm shutting him down. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty close to shutting <laughs> him down. I don't know how long we've been on for this again, but... I don't know. It was a good time, and now it's it looks 80 like minutes. The feed's kind of frozen. Oh, okay. Nope, shut it down. Yep. Thanks, Angle. Hi, oh, you, Angle. good That's night. Good. All right, so... Yep, we got uh, we got three balls back in business here. She really likes all of them. The the proton is still a whole lot of ball. She really likes the the max SE, and she likes her uh, RSP too. <laughs> he just proud. He says, "Damn it, Angel." <laughs> yeah, but they've been out of commission, waiting on getting the getting the thumb holes, getting the thumb holes readjusted. So once again, it was no fault of mine. No, I didn't miss anything because I just don't screw up when I'm drilling stuff. No, he doesn't. I, I will. He screws up other things. I'm, I'm not going to give him yeah. that much credit. But on bowling balls, no. He nails it yeah, perfectly. Yeah. This, is, this is one thing that, uh, that I've, got, I've got the hookup pretty well every, well, not pretty well, every single time. I mean, I drill to a 30-second, and I split hash marks. Yep. So this is... No, James, nothing too terribly exciting. You're good. Up. No, we're just re-slugging some stuff. 
Yeah. But we just we had tried out something different with her thumb hole and it didn't quite work out, and so we're just kind of resetting them to where they were at to begin with. So. Yep. Plus she wanted the she wanted a different color on the slug, the Marvel Max anyway. So. Yep. And the timeless needs done, but we need another bit, and we need a bigger slug than yeah, what we have. Yeah, the timeless has been reslugged a couple of times, so... It, yeah, three times, actually, so this will be its fourth. So, yeah, it's time to go up to an inch and three-eighths bit, because if I drill it out again, all that's really holding it in there is glue. There's no, you know, there's no pressure on the outside of the slug, so... The Marvel Max was actually... Was that a Tawny gift? Yes, yes, this was from... Barton Tani slash Barton Shabani. Yep. I love hashtag I love Albanians. Um, but this one, this is one that I really like. My favorite color is blue, and so when I saw this, I just I had to have it. And so he he gifted me one out of the goodness of goodness and kindness of his heart. And this one is uh, NRG Smooth Pearl. And at this point, when this one came out, uh, we didn't get, I really love nano stuff, and they didn't have a whole lot of nano stuff here stateside, especially nano pearl stuff. And so I really wanted to, I thought, well, this nano pearl would be amazing, and it is amazing, obviously. Now, mm -hmm. as we've all seen on the IQ for nano pearl and the Axiom pearl. And I loved my IQ nano, which was smooth also. Yeah. So, so. it's just, that's the pearl version. Mm -hmm. So it was... And I love the blue and white combo. Yeah, and it smells like blueberry. So it's yes. just... So he wasn't... He's like, I'm not going to use it on the left side. He's like, I don't know. And I was like, well, I already called dibs on it when he got it. And I said, if you stop using that, I've already got dibs. So... Yeah, and I drilled a Marvel Max Force, too, which is basically, for all intents and purposes, this ball, just a different, just a different color. And so instead of plugging this one and redoing it, I just had to plug and move the fingers. And I did such a good job plugging this, you can't even tell it's plugged. Yep. I mean, you have to, can you can you even see that on camera? Well, I need Probably to get closer. Yeah. Or you bring it closer, but do that. I plugged the fingers. Actually, I've got the light here. I plugged the fingers. Oh, if you hold it just right, you can see the shadow. Yeah. But I plugged the fingers and I moved those over and then the thumb, the thumb was originally here and so I moved the fingers over and down and I did plug the thumb to kind of reset the pitch because the pitch would have been based off my pitches and off of this orientation right here. But I went ahead and plugged it and then just redrilled the plug out of the exact same spot so that when I go when and if I went to re-slug the ball, instead of having to remember what the pitch was based off this old orientation and draw the slug out and then have to reorient her thumb pitch off of, you know, what she does. It's just a whole lot easier to have the slug hole at the same pitch as the thumb hole. Yeah, start fresh. So, yes. Yep. So, yes. Ta-da! But now that we have our own stuff here, it's not so terrible. Mm -hmm. Underplug the goat. So, all right, uh, yeah. well, it's bedtime. time. We have my uh, brother's brewing company, my brother and sister-in-law's brewing company. Yep. Has a new brunch menu that we're going to go try out tomorrow. So. One more time. Yep. All right. I posted the Discord and the Patreon links one more time. So if anybody wants to continue talking or talk later, about bowling balls, yeah. bowling, um, usually video games come in there at some point. Yeah, we, we talk about all kinds of stuff. And like I said in the private, like I said this morning, um, we have one general channel, and I think the tournaments channel is, we have a, the general and the tournaments channel available for free. And then we have, within the private channels, as part of the Patreon membership, we have a regular channel, we have a, a food channel, we have a dog channel, mm -hmm. we have... Um, we have a few others too, depending on what you want to talk about, but uh, we mm -hmm. do talk some, we have, we have plenty of gamers in there too. So we do talk some, mm -hmm. talk some gaming occasionally. Yeah. And there well, is, so. there are two motive staffers in there. Um, motive Lou is actually on the general side. 
So it's not just Storm and Roto yeah, that's in there. Yeah, there's a lot of beat you over the head with Storm and Roto stuff. There's all kinds of different people in there, and we yeah. talk about all kinds of different stuff. So Yeah, um, Ilpad that's in there, he was on with EBI, I believe, the last time he was on with Contract. Or at least he's extremely familiar and versed in them. If not, I'm trying to remember now for 100%. I'm sure yeah. James will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but any, anywho, there's tons of ball discussion going on. So if you would like to join Patreon and or Discord, then go for it. But I think that's a, a wrap for tonight. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll be back on here probably again on the 31st will be the next one. There probably won't be any pop-ups between now and then. Uh, yeah, not any, not any streams. I'll have some videos and stuff. I think I'm going to go through and show off my... Of course, it's probably not a good idea to show off my overseas collection. But anyway, I've got yeah. some... Uh, I've got some... Yeah, have your rated to do, or your report cards to do. report cards to do, and so I'll probably get a handful of those out. Mm -hmm. So the next time you see Luke go live will be with James here doing a drilling stream, and James will open up his present that will be a new bowling ball that he does not officially know 100% what it is. He's narrowed it down. But Luke is picking the layout. We've picked the ball, mm -hmm. and we will have. We will. I'm gonna borrow a compass so that way you can actually full on laid out, play with everything. I don't need a compass. I can do it with a. It's easier to do with a compass. But I no. I wanted one because I think it would be for demo type stuff and no, discussing. I could probably just. I don't think Dave ever uses the one in the shop, so I could probably just. Buy That's it what I want to. Well, I was just gonna borrow theirs at least for now. Um. But, it's a um, round ball, yes, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, we'll be live on the 31st, and then again on the 1st. We did a big mega stream in September for the KC Open um, when James was here and when Tamara from Tamara Bowling was here. And we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to be at Aaron's in the Den again, and we're going to have the torch set up and the board boxes set up, and yeah. um, that should be a, a bigger one. But also, if you want, if you're just interested and just happen to be wanting to watch some videos for no reason at all, <laughs> <laughs> watch some extra videos yeah i'm uh i think i'm like thirty thousand views away from two million views on the year so my ocd would just really like to hit two million so if you want to just start a playlist and let it play overnight or something like that <laughs> or just watch some extra stuff for the heckers of it i would appreciate it. i think i'm gonna get there just uh, oh james his only request is just let me pick the turbo switch grip thumb color oh yeah i you can pick the color. I'll even get, we'll get the uh, tiara out for him. <laughs> and a little bit of bling. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time.